bright and attractive colors to this rich sauce and to this an attractive plating. What makes this Istufado different from yours? Stay tuned and find out! You're watching the cooking series. Let's join Romilo at his small kitchen. Warm greetings and good evening. Your Koi uncle here in Holland, Romilo. Welcome back to our kitchen. Tonight we're cooking oxtail stew and I'd like to make the classic Spanish version. It's called Istufado de Rabo de Toro. There are accounts that even uh, Ernest Hemingway went to Spain just for this dish because it really tastes heavily. And we're doing that, we're duplicating that uh, dish here in Holland. And this, which we already know in the Philippines. But what makes this uh, have its uh, special Spanish uh, flavor is the use of a certain spice that I'll be uh, introducing. Later. And our ingredients oxtail, two cups of wine, olive oil, salt, and pepper, the sofrito, garlic, onion, and ginger, three tomatoes, two uh, carrots, and Leek. And don't forget, and a half teaspoon of cloves. Let's listen to some habaneras while we review the preparations of the ingredients. Zampaguita gentil que halagas Con tu aroma mi filipina Zampaguita flor peregrina Ay que en tus trenzas bordando estás Que en breve collar prendida Dulce besa su ardiente cero Quien pudiera de amor lleno flor venturosa tú y cual tú y gozar dichosa tú que al perfumar el viento tu aroma y su aliento confundense al par dichosa tú First, I'll be uh, salting and peppering the uh, oxtail. I didn't mention that it would be better to use the uh, all-purpose flour just a bit to help uh, apply the salt and pepper. Doing this, let's acknowledge the flowers at the back. They're from the garden. And by the way, we will be doing the simpler dishes at the garden, at the shed. This will be dusty, so I'll be wearing my apron. Just mix uh, the flour and one by one. Coat the uh, pieces with the uh, salt and pepper and flour mixture. The flour helps in the absorption of the uh, salt and pepper. I repeat, what we're cooking tonight is estofado de rabo de toro or oxtail to stuff place if you're living in Holland and in Belgium. It's stuff place when stopped. Okay. 
what do you think is the difference? Or what would be the difference if this dish with what we have been accustomed to in the Philippines? Observe closely and indicate in the uh, description box below what's the difference with how you prepare it in your regions. This is the classic uh, Spanish uh, rabo de toro. We'll fry this uh, pieces now. I can find my tongue, so I think this will work. <laughs> Let's just fry them until they become golden brown. This is the result of our fried uh, uh, pieces. You see, we see oil will be uh, stir frying our ingredients. The ginger, the garlic. Oh, there's one here left. I forgot. I didn't see it. <laughs> and look, this is, that's the this advantage of using casserole for stir frying. And the leeks, we can combine now. This recipe also varies from one region to another. There's, there's this Cordobese style, there's this Madrileño style, but this is the uh, classic. The, it can also be the simple, because there are even versions that add uh, chocolate in, into it. We're not doing that. While well, stir frying this, I'd like to remind you, my dear viewers, that this is a channel intended to showcase our culinary experience back in the homeland, at the same time expose our palate into easy, adoptable recipes of other countries. That's why, if you like our content, don't forget to subscribe. And if you want to su support this effort in showcasing our uh, recipes back home, don't forget to share as well. And I would certainly appreciate it. And our mother land will also appreciate it. It's our heritage. The tomatoes now. And you might as well add the carrots as well. This turned a bit dark. They've been exposed to the air, so even after uh, cleanly peeling them, they turn brown. It's not a problem because anyway, this will have a dark sauce, dark brown sauce. I'm adding the fried. Tail now, tail pieces, I would say, to the tail pieces. I think this ingredients, this ingredients are what make the difference with the uh, istupado that we know back home. I don't know what have we replaced with the wine in the cooking. I think the vinegar works. Let's add the wine now. Two cups. 
and the complete list of ingredients you can find in the, in the description box below. And the uh, gloves. If you don't have gloves, replace it with chocolate. And to enhance the flavor further, instead of salt, I'll be adding beef cubes. I'll be using two. We'll cook this until the uh, meat falls off from or detaches from the uh, bone. And for a traditional stove, that will require around three hours. I'm done using a pressure cooker for this uh, recipe, but it doesn't work. It, it burns, it burns the sauce. So better use the traditional way of uh, slowly simmering it. So while this cooks, let's do some editing. Before I go and edit, special thanks to my lean Raka for continuously supporting our channel. And to Kordapia, Shika Kordapia as well in Saudi Arabia. Thank you, my friends. Due to the thick sauce, this dish is easily burned, so stir it regularly and simmer at low flame. And once you're ready to serve it, add half cup of olive oil or butter. It's best to stay or uh, to have this stand overnight and when serving the flavor intensifies and when serving is good to yeah, to make it a bit more uh, pleasing with chopped onions. It's best to keep this too overnight and it will get this more enhanced taste the next day. Thank you for joining your Kuya for this uh, cooking of Rabo de Toro or Estufado de Rabo de Toro or Oxtail uh, stew. Uh, this uh, goes well, it combines well with fries, rice or rolls, but for me, I'm going to eat it with rice. Thank you for joining your Kuya here and in supporting this effort to showcase our uh, national dishes to the world at the same time expose our palate to uh, uh, easy adaptable internet recipes until next time Dios hermano